kinetics, the collision theory, and activation energy. Explaining how and why factors affect reaction rates. As I go through this PowerPoint, you should be taking notes on the right side of your composition notebook. And if you see something that you have already written down on the left side because of your reading strategy, you can just highlight it. What is kinetics? Kinetics is defined as the study of the rates of chemical reactions and the factors that affect the speed. The speed of a chemical reaction is the rate at which the concentration of reactants and products change. Given the reaction A goes to B, where A are the reactants and B are the products, the rate of a reaction is the rate at which the concentration of A decreases and the concentration of B increases. In a chemical reaction, the reactants change into products. The reactants disappear while the products appear. The brackets that you see around A and B refer to the concentration and specifically molarity, moles per liter. This diagram shows the reaction of A changing into B over time. Notice that in the very left square, at the very beginning, all you have is A. All you have are reactants in the vessel. Now over time, A changes into B. That means that the concentration of A is decreasing while the concentration of B is increasing. Reactants decrease while products increase. This graph represents the change in concentration of A and B over time. It would be good to draw this graph into your composition notebook. Let's now consider the collision theory or collision model. In a chemical reaction, bonds are broken and new bonds are formed. Molecules can only react if they collide with one another. A collision is necessary for a reaction to occur. Given the reaction A plus B goes to C, A and B must collide. There has to be a collision. A successful collision is one in which the reacting particles collide with number one, enough energy, and with number two, correct orientation. A successful collision is one in which the reacting particles collide with enough energy and with correct orientation. The minimum amount of energy needed to get a reaction going is called the activation energy. If you take a look at this diagram, we see that the person has to expend a certain amount of energy to get that rock to the top of the hill so that it can finally go down to position B. This looks very similar to a potential energy diagram which shows the reactant which must have a certain amount of energy before it can be changed into the products. 
In this diagram, we see that the reacting particles are facing the right way when they collide. As such, there is a chemical reaction. They have the correct orientation. Now in the bottom diagram, they're not facing the right way. The reacting particles are not facing the right way when they collide. They have an incorrect orientation, and a reaction will not occur. A successful collision is one in which the reacting particles collide with enough energy and with the correct orientation. The rate of a reaction depends on the number of successful or effective collisions. Now, chemists cannot change the orientation of the particles when they collide. However, we can increase the number of collisions. And as number of collisions increases, rate of reaction increases. There are four factors that affect the rate of a reaction, and we're going to look at each one. The first factor is nature of reactants. The first thing you should know is that gases react faster than liquids, react faster than solids. The phase of the reacting particles affects the rate of reaction. Secondly, we know that acid-base reactions, formation of salts, exchange of ions are very fast. Reactions in which large molecules are formed or have to be broken apart are usually slow. In general, Ionic reactions are faster than covalent reactions. In other words, if the reacting particles are ionically bonded, they tend to react more quickly than molecules held together by covalent bonds. The first factor that affects the rate of a reaction is the nature of the reactants. Number two. Concentration. As concentration increases, the number of collisions increases. If you look at the diagram below, you see low concentration means you have few collisions because there are fewer reactant particles to collide with one another. When you have a high concentration of reactant particles, there's going to be more collisions. They're going to bump into each other more frequently. Well, how can we increase the concentration of our reacting particles? For solids, the first thing we can do is increase the surface area. Notice in the diagram below that if you have a large marble chip, the ability of the reacting particles to collide is much less than when you break up the solid into smaller pieces. There are more sites for collisions to occur. By increasing the surface area, you increase the number of collisions and you therefore increase the rate of a reaction. Well, what about for solutions? To increase the concentration of a solution, all you have to do is increase the amount of solute. As the amount of solute increases, concentration increases. Remember those brackets mean concentration. And if the concentration increases, you have more atoms or particles to collide with one another. Compare the concentrated solution with the dilute solution. There is a higher probability of collisions to occur in the concentrated solution than in the dilute solution. 
Well, what about for gases? To increase the concentration of a gas, all you have to do is increase the pressure. By increasing the pressure, you decrease the volume, forcing the same number of moles of particles into a smaller volume. As volume decreases, the concentration increases and the number of collisions increases. The third factor that affects the rate of a chemical reaction is temperature. And in general, as temperature increases, reaction rate increases because A, you're going to have more collisions, and B, you're going to have more effective collisions. When you increase the temperature, there are more effective collisions because the reacting particles are colliding with greater energy. They are meeting the activation energy. The fourth factor that affects the rate of a reaction are catalysts. If I add a catalyst to a system, I can increase the rate of reaction by decreasing the activation energy. Take a look at this potential energy diagram. The pathway in red is an uncatalyzed reaction. It shows the pathway that the reacting particles must go through to change into products. Look at how high that activation energy is. But if I add a catalyst, shown by the blue line, we see that the activation energy is lowered, a totally new pathway to change reactants into products is established. By lowering the activation energy, reacting particles are able to collide with that lower sufficient energy to change into products.